Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Just Joshing. My name is Joshua Pentelaresco and this is my podcast. I've made it to the 8th episode and I'm kind of slowly feeling like I'm beginning to get the hang of it. Um, we finally passed the One Words Collide stuff. Um, I just, I've done some really cool surprise little interviews here so far. My sister, Florence Chan, for both my projects and my sister's projects. And I've done, you know, a pretty cool list of writers and graphic novels and illustrators. And in the weeks and months to come, I'm hoping to add a few other different careers to this podcast. I really, really wanted to talk to an undertaker. Because why not? An undertaker would be an awesome career to talk about from the outside looking in. Because most people, when they think undertaker, they think the dead man who's rising from the abyss. And that's, well, I would love to have the undertaker on a podcast. I just really think that the the actual job is very cool and there's a really cool skill set knowledge and plus she was awesome uh i'm looking at also other just things like archaeologists i'd love to get uh contortions contortionists back on there um that i really 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 dig and yeah hold on i'm just talking to someone on the phone i know i should or shouldn't do that on a podcast but it's my life and it's busy and uh you know, it's just the way it's just the way things have been going, and yeah, all in all, it's been good. I got my I got rejected from the agent I submitted my novel to. Um, it's a it wasn't really a bad rejection. Um, I've been told this for a long, long time that my writing when it comes to novels and prose is lacking a little bit when it comes to the technical side of things, and it's really hard to admit your own shortcomings. But and there's only so much you can do on your own. Um, you just get, when you do this kind of stuff, you get blind. You need to be around people who are better than you at what you do to get better, is my thinking and, and feeling. And I've actually been able to do that a little bit this year. So I'm going to mention a couple names here. One of them is going to be the next week's guest. And the other one's uh, someone that's actually gone out of their way to help me quite a bit. And I, you know, feel I should give some extra thanks. Aviva Bell Herald, um, she's not on the podcast yet, but I'm hoping to get her on somewhere down the line. It's an amazing novel. She's gone out of her way to help me. Her and her husband date both. Uh, I really appreciate it. I I don't know somehow why you go out of your way for me, but I'm not ungrateful. So thank you very much. Uh, and the other person was Randy McCharles. Uh, Randy is going to be next week's guest. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about this this week, but I just figured if he is listening... Um, which I'm hoping he is. Thanks, man, for everything you've done for me this year. I really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, see, my phone here, it goes again. Um, but to put a lot, to put this in perspective, um, yeah, it's, I've been around some really good people. I've been doing some amazing things this year. I've probably been more productive than I've ever been, contrary to what my NaNoWriMo car number currently will tell you. Uh, I've been behind the last couple of weeks because of Winnipeg and Edmonton both. And because of that, I've just been slowly catching up and getting into it. But I'm really digging this novel. This novel was a lot of fun. Uh, I was originally going to do something like this for a short story anthology. I don't think I'm going to get there in time. I'm going to have probably that and the other one I want to work on for the short story. It just doesn't seem like it's going to fit with the time I have, which sucks. Another, not another anthology, another time, I'll definitely do it. Uh, so, after this month, I'm definitely going to be focusing on trying to do some short stories um, for a couple different projects. But big, 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 big news is I got my own place, and I'm so, so excited. Um, I've been living with roommates for years, and I love the people I've lived with. They've all been great. Um, Corey McConaughey, or Corey McConaughey, I'm sure if you heard this right now, you just throw me. J.R. Stewart, Rob. McDonald, Randall Unland, Janiel Bostick, and Ray McClellan have been the roommates I've lived with the last few years. Ray, Janiel, and Randall for a very short time. Um, they've all gone out of their way to help me. Um, me and Corey have uh, been together the longest. I think we were good for each other. Our time just came and went. And, uh, you know, I'm not ashamed of that, so I just want to kind of say thank you. All right. And but now I'm ready to take on this next chapter on my own. I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait. It's going to be a kind of a building process, but it's going to slowly but surely happen. And I'm really excited about that. Um, 
well, let's get to this week's guest. Simon Rose is definitely a regular on my blog. He is one of my favorite people to talk to. Um, I'm sure if he heard this, he'd be shocked to hear that. But it, he's an interesting guy, and, and he's... Writing right now has kind of been really neat renaissance. And a lot of different things are being tried right now. And Simon is much like everybody else, trying to figure out his own way. And me and him have a really have really fun idea exchanges, and we talk about different things. And I, you know, and he's an interesting dude. He's been around the block. He's done some really cool things. And and you know, we talk about a few of them here. And I'll be plugging some of his stuff at the end. I recommend uh, you read any of his books. His current one is Flashback out of Techie Books. Really, really good stuff. Um, you should check it out. And, you know, I think at this point we can go straight to the interview. Um, short, shorter intro. I'm getting better at this, I think. Anywho, one last thing before we begin. Uh, I'm not quite sure about the quality of the interview here. Um, because we did it in our usual hunt, which is at a coffee shop. And coffee shops have their pros and their cons. So... If there's any problems with the audio, and I've been working on getting better at this, I apologize right now to everyone that's listening to them. Kind of go meh, because I'm gonna get better. I'm gonna get better equipment as soon as I get my place. I promise. Anyway, here's time. Introduce yourself for some reason. I probably said. My name is Josh Pantelaresco. This is Simon Rose. How you doing, Simon? Good, thank you. Yes. Uh, that's our wonderful introduction. We've already actually been talking with some interesting things already, but uh, I figure I actually should turn this on because uh, you know it is, it is what it is. So we've been we've been putting the world to rights and uh, sorting out the some topical issues in the news and, and uh, making the world a better place. But yeah. now we're going to try and stay on track, which we never usually do. I I, I, I wouldn't have it any other way to actually be honest with you. Well, let's start this. How was your experience of when words collide? When words collide, well, uh, my words collided, um, I guess. It was, uh, it's now Friday, it's almost a week ago. It is a week ago since we did it. Uh, my experience was, was very good. I was there on the, um, uh, on the Friday, uh, a little bit, in and out. And then on Saturday, I was there all day into the evening. And Sunday, I was just there in the afternoon. But uh, I wasn't there as a participant in the sessions because I was a presenter. And also, I spent a lot of time in the in the um, whatever they call it, the dealers' room, I suppose you call it, yeah. uh, uh, with my publisher and uh, chit chatting to other people, and networking and things. So, it's overall, a good experience, and I think I would probably uh, definitely consider doing it again next uh, year. Me too. I, for me, I didn't do any sessions or, or panels. I mean, I, that's the one thing I kind of wish I had done a little bit more. Because I, I, I didn't find out I was going and living for the week of. So but you like, had a table of your own. I did. No, it was really cool how that worked out. And uh, Good position to you. You were right at the front entrance. Yeah, I was. I, I, I thank Randy a lot for that. It was awesome. I got to meet all kinds of interesting people. I got to talk with everybody. You got to meet a very interesting person. Now, tell, tell the viewers, your listeners, who was it that came and bought one of your books? Diane Goblin. Who who is she? Is she famous? Yeah, she does a, um, she does a series called The Outlanders. It's a historical fiction oh. series. I, I see you're really impressed by this. Did she buy your book and say it was great? Or did she read it? She bought a book. I don't know if she's read it yet. But I mean, but honestly, my first impression, I'm not, Friday, I had no sleep. I couldn't sleep the night before because of the heat. And I was amped up because I, this is my first time doing this. And what ended up happening was I met her. And you ever have one of those conversations where you're struggling to say something and you know you're trying to be nice, but you just you can't. That, that was my problem. That was my first meeting with her. My second one was on Sunday. I got a chance to make a mens rag, which is really nice. And uh, hopefully at some point I would love to interview her after I see. Now, you didn't have any time to hear it. it she, she did some sessions, I think, and yeah. panels and things, but you wouldn't have had time to go no. to those. Well, it's, again, when you look behind the table, you don't really have time to do a lot of panels. You just don't. And, uh... Which is fine. I mean, that's 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 the uh, lot when you when you have that assignment. I mean, you've done this, I'm sure yourself, when you've done a couple of the uh, panel table, when you've just got a table and you're manning the booth. You're just manning the booth. You're talking to people, and it's great. And you're still interacting, but some of the extra events you just miss out on. No, I mean, I did a session on uh, on time travel. Uh, on the Saturday, on, on, on the Saturday, I did a session on time travel. Um, I forget the subtitle of it, but it was nice to see the room was full. Uh, I like to think that um, uh, at least some of the people were there because it was me. 
and about some people were there simply because of the topic, I think. But it was pretty good. It was uh, just under an hour. And uh, that's good questions and good interaction. I'm hoping that I would be able to do that again next year and possibly some other sessions, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping to uh, do that myself. Although not necessarily the time travel one. I don't have a time travel book yet. At some point, maybe, but uh, no, just just the whole idea of actually talking and engaging the audience was fun. I, I did the first day. I did do a couple panels because of the registration. So because of the registration taking as long as it did, the first two hours, I actually were, were just everybody getting getting their name tags and stuff like that. And uh, so what I did was I, just, I checked out a couple panels. I got to meet some really cool people doing it, and got to interact with some of the uh, authors and. It's interesting to see the different mindsets, different different writers bring to the table. Well, you've got all sorts of people there. I think that that's the thing. You have people there that are, that are established writers. Obviously, you've got you know the, the well-established writers like the celebrity guests. But you've got people who are well-established writers locally. And obviously, there are people from Edmonton and other parts of you know Western Western Canada. But there were people there from Saskatchewan and BC, and people have flown in from, from Toronto, I suppose. But a lot of people you I, I met, uh, some of them I knew. Some of them I knew from Facebook and I'd known them for years and met them before. Perhaps I hadn't seen them for a long time. So that's nice. It's nice to see them in person. So it's a, it's a good networking experience, I think. Um, I don't know. Do you, you find that? It's worthwhile for that? I, yeah. My Saturday was awesome for a lot of different reasons. Um, I got to interview a guy by the name of Robert J. Sawyer. I don't know if you have heard of him, but yeah, he's a very cool dude. A um, little intimidating, especially I literally came back from an agent pitch, which did okay. And uh, and uh, as of one of those films, I have no idea what's going on, but uh, it went really well. And so I, I got to do that. I got I, I I got to Margaret. I got to, and Brian, the publishers there. I got to interact with them. And Randy, I got to know Randy a little bit better, which I think is really cool. He's a really cool dude. And uh, so just from that level alone, it was really good. I think the strangest thing for me when I go to these things is, is I actually getting approached now for writer advice, which for me is a really weird experience. Well, well uh, what, uh, aspiring writers are approaching you because you have the book on the table. Yeah. And, you, and you've done it. You've, you've succeeded. You're, you're a big star. Or something like that. According yeah. to them. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, it's definitely worthwhile, I think. I don't know... Um, uh, I think a lot of people, as I say, you do meet a lot of people. These events are very worthwhile for networking. I think we kid ourselves sometimes that we are networking because we have a lot of Facebook friends and we're a member of lots of groups. But if you don't go to these things and meet people in person, it's not really working. And I think um, the good thing about when words collide, I think, now is that they, uh, there's some other smaller events that Randy gets involved in or people associated with Randy get involved in throughout the year. There's things at Owl's Nest, for example, uh, uh, the, 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 the readings and things like that which are quite nice to go to and it's nice of course with things like Facebook you've got of course notifications of this stuff all the time so it's, it's nice it's it's really built a sense of um, the writing community here I think that um, I think it probably always was there for um, but for different groups I think it's really helped all these different genres come together uh, I think and I think now that there's there's there's, there's a big <clears throat> There's a big element of science fiction and fantasy for adults there, of course, but there's also there's romance writers there. There's obviously children's and young adults. There's uh, horror people. There's non-fiction people. There's a few journalists kicking around. So it certainly encompasses quite a, a, a wider spectrum. That's pretty good. It encompasses a wide spectrum. I should put that in the book. You really, you really should. Maybe, maybe, maybe like, I, I, why get an acknowledgement for? You will. Yes. Excellent. I'll put courtesy okay. of. Courtesy yes. Of. Yes, so, so I think it's, it's certainly worthwhile. I think it's, uh, you know, I look sometimes at, uh, at some of the sessions that are going on and I think, wow, I wish I could go and sit in on that. But uh, you, you, you can't really do everything. Um, I think the, um, I don't know what my favorite part of it was, particularly. I think just really just meeting all these different people. And of course, we had the autograph session on, um, on the Saturday night. I, I wasn't sure what to expect from that, but that was really very busy and wild and everything. And I, I sold a fair, I sold more books at this event than I thought I would. Mm -hmm. um, well, again, me too. Because for me, it's like I only like, I like have one book, and next year when I go, I'm going to have more than one book. And uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. But it, it was, it's weird because it's like I'm really right there, and I'm looking around, I'm seeing all these different people with all these different books and stuff. And I'm like, what am I doing here? On the one hand, but on the other hand, it's like 
I did well. I got to meet people. I got to interact. And I got to talk. And one thing I, I do think I'm very really good at is I have a big mouth and I can talk. And well, the thing is with books, when yeah. you, if you've got a book, uh, at some point in your writing career, writing life or whatever, you are going to have, hopefully, you're going to have one published book. And it's going to be sitting on the table with you. And that's it. And if you're, if you're sensible, perhaps you might have some other things on the table with you, whether it's bookmarks or something to fill up the space because you've only got the one book. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you're fortunate enough and keep working hard and get uh, publishers interested, you're going to have more than one. And when you've got, say, three books on the table, you look very prolific, yes. um, I suppose. So you think then that this, this was obviously a worthwhile event. Um, are all these sort of conventions and festivals, are they all worthwhile? Today? Some are, some are. It's... I think I think I think for me personally, um, this year I've done a lot more shows, not just in Calgary but in other cities. I did a show in Phoenix this year. I enjoyed that show. It's a really good convention, really good environment. And I did decently in sales too. Um, but the thing I the thing I, I'm learning too is that some of these places, right, are um, are more tailored to certain audiences than others, and like. Uh, I made the bang on my next year to do a Calgary Con. Not because I, I dislike the show, but it's so much tailored to me. Right? Which one, the expo? Yeah. It's just not, it's not, like, I would need, I feel like my volume doesn't match what I need to actually make it worthwhile for myself at this moment in time. Two, three years down the road, because if the right things seem to be going, I'm going to have the material. I, I think it would be more worth it then. Um, because the last couple of years I've been sharing with somebody and they're really good at what they do and I'm really grateful and appreciative, but I'm just like, if I publish a couple more things, which is which is happening, now it's like I shouldn't be on that table anymore because it detracts from her and I don't want to do that. No, I think you've got to pick and choose with everything. It's the same as everything else. It's with, uh, it's with writers groups that I have belonged to over the years um, and had been members of. I think you have to just assess, well, is this is this worthwhile me belonging to? Am I getting much out of it? Am I going to their meetings? Are they providing me with traffic to my website? You just got to pick and choose. It's similar in some ways to, uh, as you know, I do all these book signings locally. You pick and choose your locations. If, if you think, well, I, this chapter's stored, I do very well at this one. I've gone five times and sold very few books, so I'm going to stop doing that one and do this other one instead. And I think with the Expo, uh, when I started doing the Expo, which is in April, of course, uh, I um, uh, looked at that and I thought, well, is this going to be worthwhile? Is it going to cost me money? And can I sign up books? And so I thought, well, I'll try it and see if it works out. And it did. And so I've been doing it ever since. And until the Expo fails to deliver in terms of book sales and uh, editing clients and things that I get out of it from handing out business cards, I'll continue to do it. Uh, but there's an Edmonton one, of course, the Edmonton Expo, which comes up in September, uh, is much smaller than the Calgary one. And with that, of course, not living in Edmonton, you have to figure in travel and accommodation and meals and everything. So would it be worthwhile, especially if it was, even if it was the same size audience, would I be able to sell enough books to make it worthwhile? So I think that, that you, have to, you have to decide, you have to try things out mm -hmm. and assess them and decide which one's good for you. And that's what I've been doing this year. I actually enjoy, going, like I said, I enjoy, like, I love the Phoenix Con. I can't do it next year in large part because of where our dollar is right now. That adds to it. Now, on the flip side, sales are really good. If I get a sale, it's really good for me. Buy flying accommodations food with your dollar being such a gap, I have to sell a decent amount of books to make that up. And again, with just one, I can't do it. I would love to because I like to enjoy that con a lot. But but it's you know it's one of those years. At the end of the day, it's a business. It is, and I think you've got to just, as I say, you have to pick and choose. If you did, if you did well, uh, as well as you expected, or almost as well as you expected at the Calgary, then that's fine. Now, you had mentioned sales and everything, and, uh, and having something different for next year. Now, you, your, uh, when did it? Your first one was last year, wasn't it? July last and, year. Uh, you better tell people what it's called. Well, the first, my first book was called The Watcher. Um, and my 10 second elevator pitch is it's about a slain boy that kills his dragon masters and goes into a post apocalyptic wasteland, discovering that there's more to life than being a slave. And it sounds very interesting. I've actually read it. Yes. Did you like it? Yes, I did. Okay, excellent. Book two uh, comes out this October. It's called Storm Dancer. It's 
without spoiling too much, the main character mysteriously disappears. And it's up to um, uh, it's up to his friends to rescue him. And I did that for a couple of reasons. I wanted to develop the other characters more. And I thought the best way to do that was to take the main character from the first book, at least mostly out of the second one. Just so I can actually flesh out the other characters, who they are, what motivates them, what drives them. And it's given me some interesting ideas of what to do for book three if I do a book three. Um, but uh, no, I was really proud of it. Um, it's a little longer. I think it's a little better. Right? So this is okay. So this, but this book two, because it is called book two, yeah. is in the same world, same world, uh, same characters with some extra characters, but it's the same thing. It's a, it's a sequel it's, or, 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 it's, or a part of a series. It, it, it's part of. A, I would say it's part. I, I, I would say book two or three. Um, I probably, in theory, could write them forever, so I'll never ever say never say never do it. But I do have plans of it. If I do a third one, it'll be a final one for that world for this time. Um, but this is book two. I, I sort of the, it's a sequel, and it was challenging. I don't, I, I don't think you've done like a, any sequels yourself, but it was weird because you, you have to look at your first book and go, okay, what worked? What what do you, what do you like about it? What would you change? How can you make the second book different enough, right? Where it is a new story, but yet for those who have read it before, feel it's the same world. There's a sense of continuity. I think you need to need to try to imbue, and that's a hard. That's a hard, hard. Uh, that was a hard balance. My solution, at least for this one, was. Well, the main character was such a strong character with his own journey. I thought, well, what well, if we took him out? Just what, what, what if you took them out, and what if you what if you let the other characters carry the carry it, and what what would happen? And I wrote it, and yeah, no, it really worked out well. It still feels a lot like the first book, but it's not. It's very different. It's a different journey. So, now, did you intend this to be a uh, trilogy when you started the first one? Nope. <laughs> so I've, I've wondered about that because, well, I mean, obviously, some people do a um, series of books like the Harry Potter or, or whatever it is, uh, 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 Percy Jackson, all these different uh, series of books. Um, as a series, of course, is that you've got the adventures of Josh in this wonderful adventure. And then in the second book, he goes on another adventure, some similar characters. There might be some people who recur and come back, but it's not a sequel as such. It's just another adventure, yeah. like the Magic Treehouse was different adventures in different places. Um, whereas a sequel, is, is a sequel different? It's... Well, like I said, the big challenge, like I said this earlier, there, there's a sense of continuity that you have to have. Um, and to keep this in mind, I, I, I say, I jokingly say this, but it's true. I accidentally wrote the first book. I never intended to write the first book. It just happened. And when I finished it, I was like, okay, there's definitely room to tell more stories here. It's a neat world. It's a neat idea. And then, like, early in, like, I, in January when I wrote it, it's like, well, my first question was, was there material here for me to continue? And the first draft didn't go so well, and that was when I made the decision to, to get rid of him as a character at this moment in time, because I realized he was too strong and the other characters weren't developed enough. And so I figured I'd have to develop them somehow in a way that makes sense. And that's what the, this book really was, it's about developing that. Um, and but, I, it's, but it's not, but it's not, you didn't start out to write it, like, say, yeah. with... Um, with the golden compass, the the the, 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 oh, Pull, yeah. the Pullman thing, where he obviously had a, 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 a series of three of a tightly uh, woven together three series of three books, it was definitely going to be bang 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 like that. No, I actually the way I, the way I approach this series in particular, I want to have tell each story as fully as possible within one. You don't have to read book one, read book two. It definitely helps. Some of the things that happen in book one, some of the things that they go through in book two make more sense reading book one. But it's it's essentially another coming of age story, but from another perspective and another journey. So you can get just 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 read book two, you get a full story in, a, in, in, in So it's a series rather than a trilogy. Yeah. But I, I, I am gonna but the, there's the I I do plan out the third one. Like if I, if I do a third one, that will be it for that world for now. 
just me personally, I want to do other things. No, you have to. Have, I think you have to have a bit of a break. I think if you've written, if you've written a, yeah. uh, an epic fantasy series, and unless you're really intent on doing everything in that thing, or you've written a historical medieval uh, series, and you want to step away from swords and shields for a while and go and write a, a gritty urban adventure, or if you've written time travel stories and you want to move away from it, or you've written superhero stories and you want to do something different, it helps. I think freshes yeah. your mind. Well, no, it freshes your mind. I don't think it's healthy. For a writer to constantly go back to the same world over and over again, like professionally and personally. But what about George R. R. Martin? Martin? Okay, one, he, he's living in that world. Well, he, he's been living in that world for 20 years. I almost feel sorry <laughs> for him. Um, almost. Um, thing is, when he started his career, he did a lot of other things. He did a lot of books in the 70s and 80s that were completely different than what he's doing right now. He left the um, novels for television and for him, this fantasy series is the new thing for him, right? Whereas if you look at like Dying of the Light or Tough Boy and Jimmy and his earlier works, they're very, very, very different animals. Oh, yes, yes. The, the, the thing is, right now, he is living in that world. And of course, he's, he's, a, he's obviously contracted to do certain things. And he's tied to the TV show thing. But it, but anybody, I think, who's living in a certain world, even, even the, the whole Percy Jackson thing, I mean... You know, the, the, the author is, is living in that world. Oh, J.K. Rowling, she was living in that world Rowling for a smart. long time. Yeah, well, Rowling was smarter, I think, than the other ones. Because she, she didn't have a set goal in mind. She was writing for her kids from, like, I think, 10 to 8, 17. And when her kid, and then when her kid got old enough, she wanted to stop writing them. She could, in theory, go back. And, 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 and I'm sure if the dollar signs are right, she would go back. Because again, there's a business aspect to this we can't ignore. But she's done. It. She's even right now. She's doing other things. Like she's writing other stories, just because <laughs> for her own sanity, right? It just you have to do. True, something. I guess. Yeah. So, so th this one of yours, uh, number two, uh, it's coming out. Awesome. It's it's done. It's done. And is this same same publisher? Same publisher, same artist. Who is the publisher? Miramont Books. Uh, they are a small press based out of Windsor, Ontario. Windsor, they, right? Yeah. And um, I I interviewed jo Justine, which who's the uh, head was a writer herself. She published her own stuff, and she had earned her way basically into a decent distribution. Earned her way to a decent distribution deal, and and she's. Wanted to give it a go, and like I said, I figured, why not? It's something simple, and you know, I just go out there and, and see what happens. And it's been good. I've enjoyed. I've enjoyed my little relationship with Justine and Mandy. Mandy's the other publisher there, and they, they've been really nice. I, 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 like I said, I never expected to get this published this way. I'm not in my wildest dreams. Just kind of happened, and I'm just like, I'm going with it and just kind of seeing where it goes. Are they interested in book three? Have they already said that? I haven't talked to them about that. I talked to them in October when I go down there when the book gets launched, and uh, I'm going to talk to them see if they are interested in a final one. If not, that's fine too. I mean, I, I, I can tell that story. I know what that story is going to be, and I might just, you know, I'm. If worst really came to worst, I do it myself. I do just to finish it and be done with it and 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 move on. Um, you know, and then I have other things. I, I have other things on the on the pike I'm working on as, as of right now. And is this an ebook as well as a print version? And absolutely, everything? Oh, absolutely. You can get it as a Kindle. You can get it at Kobo. Whatever you, whatever. And the you, same with book two. Yeah, same book two. It will be the same thing. Um, Literally, I'm at the point where, as of right now, I'm just putting all the acknowledgments and thank yous and stuff like that in the book. And uh, you know, it, it's interesting seeing your book come together. It's just really, it's just really, really, really. It's an interesting process. I've done it myself, but it's actually nice that a publisher is doing this now. It's nothing I have to do anymore. But I mean, it's nice that you're working with the same people. It's also nice to have the same artist. Yes. For the cover. Oh, oh there's pictures inside too. Illustrations oh, inside. No, oh, absolutely no. Um, the biggest thing that's changed from book two to book one is I put Florence, Florence Chan as the artist. I put her name on the front. Um, she adds a dimension to the story, I think, that wouldn't otherwise be there. And I'd be, and something I've learned about collaborations in the past, your artist or your illustrator does bring something to the table. And especially when you're doing illustrations on the interior, in the interiors, it, 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 it creates imagery for the world, and, and, and she challenged me a little bit too about some of my own perceptions of it. So she deserves the credit for it, you know. So she's going to be on her name's going to be on the front cover too for this one. 
um, because I, that's what I want. I think she deserves it. And uh, I, I think that, I think if I get one more book out of her, I would be truly be lucky because she's really, really good. I, 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 I think I just got busy in here. <laughs> Well, it is a Starbucks, that's for sure. You can't. Uh, it's not. A, it's not. A, it's not a private location. It is a busy, busy coffee shop. So. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you got lots on the go. Yeah. It's, um, I, yeah. It's all kind of converse. I have another collaborator contacting me this week about another project that's been simmering for about a year. Um, when this is done and my other deadline's done, um, that's the next thing I work on, and then I go on the road again. So it, it's. No, it's weird how things converge. Um, so when's your next um, uh, event? My next event, it's actually, I'm, look, I'm working on it right now. It's going to be at, in Windsor. Um, I'm talking to her right now. It's probably going to be at book signing on, on the weekend, the week I'm up. Uh, it's either going to be P&B Books or it's going to be uh, Crafters Plus. Windsor's got a lot of small... This is before the end of the year. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah the, and I'm contacting Owl's Nest Books right now and another Dimension Comics in town. There's a lot of places I'm going to be doing signings i'm gonna finally i feel like i have enough material i can approach chapters you know and go okay let's can we do something and when can we do it um that might be next chapters might be next year but like i, I got some events coming up to, like back where i'm from and yeah just kind of i'm just, I'm just going with the flow basically at this point so exciting times yes 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 so i bet you have flashback me, I uh, well, uh, it's uh, it's a flashback when I go to bookstores locally. A flashback seems to sell not you know it doesn't sell hundreds of copies more than the others, but it always seems to sell more copies than the others at uh, the book signing events I do locally. So uh, I think the cover helps immensely. The cover draws people in. I can be talking about the other books. If there's uh, nine of them all together on the table, I'm talking about all the other books. But by the before I finish talking about all of them, they've already picked up flashback and they're looking at the cover and looking at the back and everything. So it, it draws people in. Uh, so it is doing uh, as reasonably well, I think, but it only came out in uh, at the Expo. We launched it at the Expo in April uh, and it sort of wormed its way into uh, chapters at Indigo and things at events I was doing in the, in the sort of May, June. So it's not been out for that long. Uh, so we'll see how things look at the end of the year, I suppose. Yeah. Well, I'm um, glad. Yeah, actually, truthfully, I really do like your cover of Flashback. It, it, it does really draw you in, and I think it, it, I think without going, not being too critical, some of your other books, the art style on the front and the actual book inside, don't always completely match. And I think this one, this one here, did a really, really good job of capturing the idea of what you're trying to what you were trying to establish yeah i mean i think i think you know with uh, if you if somebody's written uh, even five books never mind nine i think to, if, if you were extremely happy unless you organized all the covers yourself and had complete control if you were extremely happy with every single cover mm -hmm. or every single aspect of the book design of every title it'd be it'd be a surprise you know um some of the books, um, I some of the books, uh, in, in the other books, I have not liked the covers particularly, but, but the children like the books and love the covers. So it's like, well, it's not really my opinion that matters. If the children like the books, I suppose, because that's the thing. I go to a book signing and um, just the books are for children. The children are always there at the front of the table. Parents are with them, but it's the children who are getting The parents don't think you should buy this book and pick it up and show it to the child. The child picks up the book and says, "Wow, I like this cover. I like this book." And if I don't like the cover, it doesn't really matter because they they the sale's been made, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but I think the cover makes a difference, and um, and hopefully uh, the publisher will be interested in sequels to Flashback. I have started um, work on two sequels. To flashback, and then it will uh, become a trilogy. So, is it, is, it the, is it the same thing with you? Is it the challenge trying to find a good continuity for it for you? Because I don't know if you're, any of your other books actually have sequels to it. Well, some of them, the, the uh, I just assumed that I first began, I always assumed that perhaps a, a, a book, if it's successful, you would be the publisher would demand a sequel, or the public, the adoring public would, would demand a sequel, you know. Uh, but um, so, that never happened. I wrote uh, separate stories, uh, standalone books, and um, some of them, are, some of them definitely could not have sequels because the the story ended and that was it. And some of them, uh, uh, some of them were yes. There's definitely um, scope for, not for more adventures. I mean, any book 
I suppose you could think, well, let's take Josh the hero from this book and put him in another adventure, but it's not really compelling for you as a writer. But I think with of the uh, not of the eight books other than Flashback, I suppose maybe half of them could have sequels. Uh, but it comes back to something I was going to mention to you earlier. If you if you wrote a book ten years ago and then you thought, yes, I'm going to do a sequel. It's probably too long a gap in your mind. You wouldn't be. You have to reread your book again and get back into it if you wrote it ten years ago. And um, so I don't. I don't know. But I think with um, Flashback came out in uh, in spring. The idea was has been there for quite some time, and uh, so I'm very familiar with the story. <clears throat> but uh, somebody had mentioned that. Well, have you thought about a sequel? And I thought, well, no, I hadn't really. It wasn't written with sequels in mind. And then I thought, well, I nobody really writes two books. Everybody has a trilogy. And years from now, when I'm sitting on some uh, couch next to Oprah talking about my books, perhaps, you know, uh, and they'll talk about the trilogy, I'll be saying, oh, yes, it was always going to be a trilogy, which it wasn't. But um, so I decided to uh, write outlines for um, two books. Well, one long book, which I'm going to split in the middle, uh, and have a cliffhanger ending. So then there'll be um, three. Whether anyone will be interested, I don't know. I think it would be. Uh, I, I mean, I've read some of your stuff. That you're really good. I mean, Thank you. you, 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 you your niche is, is very fun and entertaining. And I watched you work on the con floor. You're, you're very fun and entertaining yourself. Um, I, 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 my personal favorite thing you do is, is go to like the, the 60, 65 year old. Are you between the ages of eight? <laughs> well, I think you have to sort of get, put people at their ease, I suppose. But, but I think with the with the sequel thing, we should we, we shall see. I mean, the publisher has mentioned that yes, um, that oh yeah, that, that there's there's probably scope there, and so um, I know if, if if you do this, I know not every writer does an outline, but I, I spent most of June thinking, okay, well, I will sit down and see. I'll, I've already made some notes about uh, possible ideas for sequels and where there were bits and pieces just from memory uh, from the story. Well, is this something I could explore? And then I went back and reread the book uh, uh, just to look, okay, yes, <clears throat> there are some places here where we can expand and there's some threads that need to be expanded on or tied up or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then I sat down in June and decided to start writing an outline for, for a long book, which I'd split in the middle. And, it, I, and I, my thoughts were, if this seems too uh, much of a stretch to turn it into two books, then I, I'll, I won't do it. But it, it turned out to be pretty good, and now I'm, I'm keen to get started. You know. That's good. I, I do outlines for two reasons. One, when I uh, pitch the agents, I do an outline. because I, I go chapter by chapter of kind of what happens, so they have a clear idea. Like I said, for me, the biggest thing I've been learning the last few years as a writer is the whole concept of clarity. I find that um, who you are, what do you have, and why do you care? You can answer those three questions as much as you can. People are, well, at the very least, look at you, right? And um, so when I do an outline, I try to keep that in mind um, myself. And just also, it helps me later on organize my thoughts. So I'm like, oh, okay, I get what I was doing here, right? Whereas sometimes I'll look at my younger self and go, what were you thinking, dude? But, you know, it's, it's a learning process, right? Um, I do outlines for, like, um, there's one series that I will come back to at some point. It's an idea, it was an idea for a sci-fi novel, and I outlined a sequel to it. If I were to do a sequel, ironically not it's very apt today with the way things are going with technology and, and just the whole concept of what is the human condition, right? I just I just thought that's an interesting, interesting, you know, kit and it's clear, you know, I thought about this years ago. Um, but so I might go back to that at some point, and that's when I find outlines really good. If I do have more material, um, I don't always outline. Like what the watchers, some there's no, there's there's no outline because again, I never it was never a plan. It just it just happened, you know. Um, have you ever written a book where it just kind of happened? The first one was written by that because I didn't really know what else to do. I thought, well, I have an idea for a story. This is the vague theme i'll just write this story and it will be i'll be so creative and brilliant that it'll just all flow out of my head which which of course it does but of course it all flows out at once 
or the middle comes out before chapter three or whatever. It's a very disjointed thing, so it's best to have an outline to keep yourself on track. But as I say to kids when I go to school, does this outline change as you write the story? And the answer is yes, of course it does, but hopefully not too much if you've spent time working on it. The good thing about the outline, I find, is if you do an outline and you spend a month or something on it and make it nice and tight, that means that then if you've got a spare couple of hours and people say, well, I'm going to go and um, put some two hours aside for writing tonight or three hours on a Sunday afternoon or whatever it is, but then if you're going to sit down at the computer and hope to be inspired, I think you might write a paragraph. But if you've got the outline, you might be it's nice and tight. It's already nice and organized. You could sit down and say, OK, I'm going to rattle off two chapters just like that in a couple of hours. It makes it much easier. It doesn't always happen that way. Every book's not the same. I just finished a book uh, yesterday, editing on it. It's a um, uh, dark parallel universe novel, which I've just uh, finished going through and editing and uh, editing for myself and that's now done so i'm going to put that to one side now and concentrate on these sequels but that did not that had that was a more interesting project in that it did have an outline and as you said earlier when you look back at something you did years ago and you look back and think what was i thinking and it was the same thing with that the the the, the parallel universe story i did the outline when I revisited the outline after several years, I thought, this is pretty good. And as I was going through it towards the end, I, I was thinking, well, what was I thinking? This is not that good towards the end. But I decided to um, just work on it anyway. And that's why it's taken longer, because it's, it evolved as I went along. But, uh, it, but it's done now for now. It's, it's, it's finished as a project. And I'll come back to it later. And uh, I think it's good enough to send to people, but I'll, I'll, I'll wait and do something else. Yeah, that's fair. Um, well, I think we pretty much covered everything. Uh, is there anything we missed? Or? I don't know. We've talked about the uh, the recent conference, and we've covered a few other things. Um, apart from, uh, uh, in terms of my projects, I think that's really it. So I, I've done that novel. The sequels I'll start on. And the other recent novel I uh, had published, of course, was The Sphere of Septimus which was a fantasy in another world, which I'm also very interested in doing, um, again, either sequels or adventures in the same world. And I'd want to do three books. So I would probably sit down at some point and write um, a long outline for three books and split them up, a long book and split it to three, I guess. But that's, the sequels will come first, I think. And then, of course, there's, you know, it, 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 it's nearly September as we sit here in the coffee shop looking at the rain. It's nearly September. School begins and things uh, get busy again. So so we'll see. But, yeah. So I guess the only thing left is your contact info. How can people reach you? Well, people can reach me at my website, of course, which is uh, simon-rose.com. <clears throat> and, uh, of course, I'm on all the usual places, which is, I presume, will be uh, linked on your site somewhere there, Twitter and Facebook and everything else. So, uh, and what about you? Because we, I interviewed you here too. I know you, you think interviews within interviews within interviews. Exactly. So don't forget where people can find you. Oh, you can find me here, um, michaelthroughtime.wordpress.com. My Twitter is at jpantelaresco. I'm on Facebook as well. Um, and that's it for now. I'm, I'm still. Actually, that is the last point. Are you playing this again? Hello? No, I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything with uh, Instagram. There's certain, uh, uh, just on, in terms of social media, um, there are an awful lot of things on social media. I mean, if you go to YouTube and and, and on, underneath YouTube videos, there are all those logos where you can share something. And some of those I don't even know what they are. I must admit. I mean, I do Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and um, Pinterest, but uh, I don't. Really, I'm not that familiar with Instagram or uh, Tumblr and Stumble Upon and all these other ones. I, I it's, I, it's time. I, I don't have time to focus on too many of them. No. I just do the main ones. No, I get you. I mean, I, I, time is, time is definitely the end when you do this kind of thing. So you don't have so much you can give to this, 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 and this, or I get completely caught up into it, and next thing you know, you've done nothing. So. 
That's right, which, which reminds me, I suppose, is we should probably get back to work and get some writing done. At some point, yes. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for your time, sir. And we shall be here again probably before the end of the year. Probably. And that was Simon Rose. And, yeah, I, like I said, it's always a pleasure to chat with him. Uh, he gave you all the wonderful contact info in the end there. But SimonRose.com, Simon slash Rose. You have Twitter at Simon Rose Writer. Facebook, you can just look him up under Simon Rose. He's there. Um, like I said, his current books are Flashback and The Sphere of Sesamus. Uh He's doing some stuff at Mount Royal College online. You can check that out there. Just his the information's on his website. And the only other thing I really need to add to this is I personally changed my WordPress to jpentelleresco.wordpress.com between conversations. And I thought, you know, that uh, I should probably mention this here. And I'm also now on Instagram. Um, I personally think that Instagram is a lot of fun. I actually kind of want, I think it's a neat idea to do a medium. I think sometime early next year I'm going to do a, a uh, picture story. It's really not that different from a standard comic book, really. So I figured, why the heck not? Something to actually play with in the new year. But beyond that, we have approached the end of yet another episode of Just Joshing. So now, before I go, you can check out Storm Dancer as an ebook or a paperback at Amazon, Indigo, Chapters, Barnes and Noble, or anywhere worldwide that you know it sells books. Or you can check out my publisher, MiraclePublishing.com, and you can get the book there. Uh, I'm on Twitter at jpentelresco. I'm on Instagram at jpen J Pentelaresco, and I'm on Facebook. I am the only Joshua Pentelaresco you will find. So, beyond that, all right, next week, really cool guest. Um, but until then, stay inspired, stay out of trouble, or don't get caught. Whatever you subscribe to. Thanks, all. Have a good one. Josh. Josh.